Hey everyone, this is Joe here, and I am going to talk about light bulb brightness. Light bulb brightness, why are we talking about this? Well, the reason is, is because of the concepts. You gotta understand what happens if we increase the voltage, decrease the voltage, there's a voltage drop. Well, let's talk about that right now, and I will show you. Okay, as we can see here, we have three configurations. One is completely in parallel, which we can see on the right-hand side here. One is completely in series, which we can see on the left-hand side. And one has a combination of the two, in which I will talk about here in a moment. Now, first, let's start with the easy one. Okay, let's say that the parallel, series, or the parallel is uh, 9 volts. Let's say there's a 9 volts. That means that this entire rail right here is 9 volts. So every single one of these light bulbs is getting 9 volts. That means that every single light bulb that has 9 volts is going to produce the same brightness as long as they are the same model. Uh, by model I mean if you go to the store and you buy the same exact light bulb, you apply 9 volts to it, you apply 9 volts to the other one, they should be just as bright. Now if you have them in series on the other hand, that's going to be a problem because a light bulb isn't, is, it's resistive, meaning that there's going to be a voltage drop. So let's say there's 9 volts here, well, this, this light bulb is going to actually drop a little bit of voltage, and let's say there's 8 volts here. Well, this light bulb will be a little less bright than that light bulb. And let's say that this one has a little resistance, and this one's 6 volts, and that light bulb is 8 volts, so this one's going to be a little bit less bright. Um, and then uh, it goes on and on, so let's say this is 4 volts, and that one is like 1 volt. Well, that one's not going to be as bright as that one, and this one's going to be the least bright out of the bunch and that this one will be the most bright. Okay, well saying that, let's go ahead and look at the bottom example and we can show, uh, uh, rank them, we'll just rank them. I've listed them L1, L2, all the way through L6. So let's, let's do that. All right, well, let's say that there's nine volts here. Now this could be arbitrary, it could be N volts, it doesn't really matter. We know that at this node here, this light bulb, and this light bulb are both getting 9 volts. So we know that L1 and is equal to L2. Okay, well L2 is in series of the 9 volts, so this node right here no longer has 9 volts. But we can say that this node here, this node here, and this node here is getting the same exact voltage because there's no longer a light bulb in series in which it will drop a voltage. So we can say that, all right, well, let's say 9 volts. Let's say it just drops a volt. Let's just say it's 8 volts now. Okay, well, we know that L3, L4, and L6 are getting uh, 8 volts. But what about L5 here? Isn't L5 also getting 8 volts? Well, no, because just like the series concept, if L4 is getting 8 volts, there's going to be a little bit of resistance here. So this could be, I don't know, let's say like that's 6 volts here. That means that uh, L1 and L2 is greater than L3, 4, and 6, but L3, 4, and 6 are equal, so L3 is equal to L4, which is equal to L6. But L5, L5 is the odd man out. That one's going to look super dim. Well, it doesn't have to be super dim, but comparative to maybe L1 and L2, it's going to be, a, there's going to be a difference. So L5 will be the least bright. So ranking them, you got L1 is L2, but L3, L4, and L6 are equal, but they're less than L2 and L1, and the least bright is L5. Alright, so that's great and everything, but on page, I believe, like 59 or 60 of our Electrical Circuits book, uh, Fundamentals of Electric Circuits by Charles K. Alexander, the 5th edition, we have a diagram of uh, light bulbs and how they work. So you could see exactly, you know, I showed you the series and the parallel like they have on page 59, but on page 59, figure 2.56, they go ahead and they give you an example like this guy right here. It says, okay, there's three light bulbs, there's a 9 volt, uh, both of these light bulbs, there's two of them in series, uh, but the sum of those two is in parallel with the L1 light bulb, so we've got... L2 and L3 are in series, but the sum of L2 and L3 are in series with L1. If we want to know what the total uh, power of this is, we got uh, 20 plus 10 plus 15. 
So we got uh, 30 plus 15, which is 45 watts total uh, in this whole entire system, meaning that this nine volt battery has to produce 45 watts towards these other ones. Now, if I were to set this up, um, you can, if you're already following on the book, you can see that they have a resistive network, and that's exactly what you're gonna wanna do. As I mentioned before in the series in the parallel, uh, these light bulbs are resistive, meaning that there's a voltage drop which means that there is a current and a resistance. So let's go ahead and take a look at my equivalent circuit here. Uh, you have the 15 watt, the 10 watt, the 20 watt. Well, we can say that the R2, R3 could be represented as the 15 and the 10 watt, and the R1 could be like the uh, 20 watt. We know that the voltage uh, across these whole entire things, we got a nine volt rail here which is nine volts, all of the stuff in green means that that's nine volts. That means that you could basically, it'd be the same as like having two different circuits. Uh, you could basically have uh, a nine volt battery, a nine volt battery here, just like totally separate that and have a nine volt battery here and it'll, it'll exactly act the same, same way. So let's go ahead and move on. All right, I already wrote down a few equations we'll need. We have power, which is V times I, also V squared over R, which is also I squared R. We have voltage, which is R times I. Uh, you know, you have your current, V over R, and R, which is resistance, is V over I. Um, I broke it down exactly like I was telling you. We could say that maybe these are uh, ground nodes right here. And we know that from here to here, this is a nine volt drop. And in fact, that answers the first question, V1, which is nine volts. Um, and then we know that V2 plus V3 is nine volts as well, or uh, any sort of equivalent uh, resistance would also sum to the nine volts with the same current. And we also know that current three, this current right here is gonna go through this whole entire branch and that current two is also gonna go through that whole entire branch. Uh, so let's get started with um, V1, which we already answered is nine volts. So let's start on here, this is nine volts. Okay, so if that's nine volts, we need to figure out, well, what's R1 and what's our uh, I3? Well, let's use our power equation. We know that V times I is gonna be 20 watts. And we know that um, V squared over R is also gonna be 20 watts or I squared R is gonna be 20 watts as well. So let's start with um, V squared over R. Obviously we need to find R and we know it's 20 watts. In fact, let's uh, go ahead and use the purple color that I used. So if we have 20 watts is equal to V squared over R, so you got nine times nine over R, which is our R1 in this case. You got 81 over 20 is equal to R1, uh, which is equal to 4.05. 4.05 ohms. Okay, now we need to know what current three is, <clears throat> which I wrote in red. So current three, if that's the case, is going to be uh, nine divided by 4.05. And nine divided by 4.05 is amps. All right, so that's 2.22 and this one is 4.05. Okay, and nine volts. So that branch is done, we're, we're finished with that. Okay, so the second branch, um, there's two ways of going about this. Uh, I already mentioned earlier that we had 45 watts total. Um, if this is 20 watts and that, we can take the difference and solve it that way. I'd actually prefer to do, do it a different way. Uh, so we know that R2 and R3 together drops nine volts. So I'm just gonna have one, I'll just call this one Rn, which is equal to R2 plus R3. Okay, so R2 plus R3 is Rn. Okay, and we know that if we have R2, R3, that's just V2 plus V3, which is also nine volts. Um, so we could say that the same exact three thing as before, if we had not nine volt drops, so if we start from here, we go to here and we're going across R2 and R3, which is Rn in our case. We know that we drop nine volts because this is ground. So nine minus zero over um, Rn will give us our current. 
And if we multiply that, which is our current three, or excuse me, our current two, so we want our current two times the voltage drop, which is nine volts, and that should equal power because we're using this equation V times I. So if this is I and that's V, uh, that should equal the power. And in our case, this power is going to be the sum of R2 and R3's power since we're going from the top to the bottom. So that's 15 plus 10, which is 25. So in our case, Rn is going to be equal to uh, 9 times 9, which is 81 over 25. And 9 times 9 is 81 divided by 25. And that should give us an answer of 3.24 ohms. OK. Now, since we have that whole entire branch and that equivalent resistance, we should be able to get to current 2 now. Um, and current 2 is actually going to just be 9 divided by Rn, which is 3.24 ohms. And that's 2.78 amps. So we know that I2 is 2.78 amps. OK. Now we can get to the nitty gritty and we know that the current going through this entire branch and we can use that relationship in order to find R2 and R3 separately. So we can say, okay, well R2, just like before, is equal to uh, V divided by I. Except for we don't know what V is. V is something and we don't know what R2 is, but we do know what the power is. So what you're gonna wanna use is uh, I squared R is equal to the power. And we know the power is 15 watts. And we know that I squared, and we said I divided by our power, which was, uh, excuse me, our power divided by I squared is going to be equal to the resistance. So 15 divided by 2.78 squared is going to be 1.9408, so 1 1.95-ish around ohms. Excuse me, 1.941-ish, so 1.94 ohms. OK, so that's easy now. Uh, we have Rn excuse me, we have our R2, which is uh, 1.94 ohms. We came up with this Rn, and we said Rn is, is 3.24 ohms. Well, if Rn is equal to R2 plus R3, and we know Rn is 3.24 ohms, and if we subtract off the R2 we just found of 1.94, we'll get R3, and uh, that should be 3.24 minus 1.94, which is one, uh, excuse me, 1 1.3, which is R3. That's in ohms. Okay. Well, for me, the easiest thing to do in order to get this yellow, uh, or excuse me, blue node now, because this blue node right here, say this is like 6 volts, we don't know what it is, but say it is 6 volts. That means from here to here, there's a six volt drop across R3. For a voltage divider, it'd be the easiest way for me to figure that out, because we know that the voltage in is nine volts. So if we have V out, which is this, this right here, is equal to nine times the resistance drop that you want, which is R3, which is 1.3 ohms, divided by R2 plus R3, which we said was Rn, and Rn we said was 3.24 ohms. Uh, v out, the voltage drop is 1.3 divided by 3.24 times that by 9. And we get 3.61 volts. And that one is equal to V3. Well, V2 is easy. Uh, basically, we know that we start with 9 volts, and you have uh, 3.61 volts right here. So 9 minus 3.61 volts, 5.39 volts. 